right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Thank you, Ken. Welcome, everybody, to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm your host, Josh Taylor. Good to talk to you again on a Friday night. Now, the last time I was here in this space, we talked about Paul Skeens and what he did against the Cubs. And now tonight we get to do it again with the same person that I talked about Paul Skeens with last time, Susie Cool. She's back again, and we're going to talk about Paul Skeens. We want to hear from you all, so 412-575-2600. Give us a call. want to hear your thoughts about not only what Paul Skeens did today, but Susie, by the way, we got great starts back-to-back -back from Jarrett Jones and Paul Skeens. We saw wins on both ends of those games for the Pirates. They got good pitching from both pitchers. They got timely hitting. They got offense and run support from the offense. We saw guys who we hadn't seen hitting quite some time starting to contribute. We got a lot of it to in the past couple days, Susie. So things are kind of taking that swing that we were expecting to see. Having a problem with Susie's mic. We'll try to get that figured out and get that worked out in just a moment. But we'll, we'll get back into this here because I want to make sure we, we touch on this a little bit before we start taking some phone calls and getting your opinions about what you saw today. And I talked about this just a few moments ago. Paul Skeens became the first pitcher in Major League history to pitch six innings without giving up a hit and striking out double-digit batters within his second career start. And we talked about this earlier during KDKA News at 6. There's a list of guys who had hundreds of career starts, Susie, that we, we saw guys with hundreds of career starts that weren't able to do what Paul Skeens did in striking out the first seven batters of the game. And he did it in his second start. We saw a lot of things fall into place today. I think the biggest difference between Paul Skeens today and last week at PNC Park was honestly just that, that he wasn't at PNC Park. It wasn't his major league debut. If you think back to just last week, that's a lot of pressure for, I don't care if you're Paul Skeens or you're just some guy out on the street. You are in front of a, an almost sold out crowd at your new home ballpark. You're just 21 years old mm. and you have all of this pressure on you because you were just picked first overall in the 2023 MLB draft. And he even said that after today's start, he just felt more in command of his fastball he felt more in command with everything that he had in his wet repertoire and it really showed again against the Cubs here today and he even had a little bit of cockiness before the game I'm sure we've all seen the viral video at this point but he said let them challenge me let them see what they can do against me just because it's the second time around he came out there with a chip on his shoulder and he proved it today yeah I think another thing that we noticed between this game and the first meeting with the Cubs at PNC Park on Saturday he was a lot more aggressive this time around you didn't mm -hmm. see him eating around the edges of the strike zone as much when he got two strikes up on a hitter if he knew he couldn't get a guy to swing at a bad pitch or that guy wasn't fouling him off he just went right at him and got guys out including that very last strikeout that he had of the game he mm -hmm. went, was very aggressive aggressive and he went after guys that he couldn't get out the first time around he got him the second time around today was all about command for Paul Skeens and, and you're right Josh he threw 100 pitches 67 of those pitches were strikes whether they were swung at fouled off um, you know grounded into play they were strikes so whenever you look at that whenever you're throwing over 50 percent of your pitches over the plate and they're being accounted for as a strike in some type of way yeah that's a lot different than his last outing 412 575 2600 give us a call want to take your want to get your thoughts on that and we're taking a bunch of calls right now phone lines are lighting up also Shoot us a tweet over at Josh Taylor HD. We're answering those as well. We'll come back. We'll have our tweet of the night. We'll hear from you. Stick around. Welcome back. Time for our GMC Sierra tweet of the night. Ryan M. Spader is the provider of that tweet. Paul Skeens, career game started two. Time striking out each of the first seven batters, one. Then look at the next four names. Nolan Ryan, Steve Carlton, Roger Clemens, Randy Johnson, 700 plus games started by the first three, <laughs> 600 plus by Randy Johnson. None of them struck out the first seven batters to start again. Now, I want to be clear. Susie Cool is here with me. Susie, you're my witness. I want to be clear. We are not comparing Paul Skeens to any of those great all-time pitchers. We're just saying he did something that those guys never did, and he did it in his second start. You can't ignore that part. Is that fair? 
It, that that's very fair, and it's actually funny because Jeff Hathorn uh, today he came into the station and was like, "When you think of the best pitchers of all time, who do you think of?" And we were saying names like Nolan Ryan, Steve Carlton, and then I also just said, you know, Paul Skeens. If you're thinking about right now, you're thinking of people like Paul Skeens, even Jared Jones, throw him on that list. You're thinking of these younger guys in these organizations. So it's not shocking to see his name already associated with that, but just two starts into his major league career, that's huge. I mean, scale it down a bit, though. Just think about greatest pitchers in this organization's history and mm -hmm. start looking at where Paul Skeens measures up. I, I, I was telling somebody about this, had a conversation previously, and we were talking about the excitement surrounding Garrett Cole when he was called up, what, 11 yep. years ago? Remember how good Garrett, mm -hmm. Garrett Cole was when he got called up? We don't even mm -hmm. think of Garrett Cole in that stratosphere right now with Paul Skeens. That's how good he's been. And Garrett Cole was good when he debuted. He was number one overall pick. No one questioned it. And, and he was at Power 5 school, guy who pitched in the College World Series. He was good. We look at Paul Skeens mm -hmm. and we're like, well, Garrett Cole was good, but he wasn't that. that that's the level that we're talking about of what we're seeing him do right now. Yeah, and that was another name that came up. But whenever I was talking to Jeff, I was like, if I have to think of people that I've actually watched at PNC Park and we're talking about a Pittsburgh Pirate, I'm picking Garrett Cole. That's number one on my list. However, you still look at what Garrett Cole did while he was here, at least in Pittsburgh. It's nothing compared to what Paul Skeens has done in just a very small sample size. That's 184 pitches. That's it mm -hmm. over two games. It Sometimes you don't want to overinflate things or get too excited about mm -hmm. things, but then again, some things are just so incredible that you have to acknowledge them for what they are. Let's get this rolling. Will and McKee's Rocks, you're on the Nightly Sports Call. Hey, Josh. Good evening, my best to you and your family as always. Appreciate you. Oh, absolutely. Hey, listen, Paul Skeens, you know, the man is definitely as advertised, but I have a question about him. How many starts does he have to have before he's eligible for the all-star game Ooh, that's a great question i think it's a number of innings that's collected if i'm not mistaken susie i'm not sure about that but at the same time if the fans vote him well that's another thing let's say he becomes one of those guys that's extra guys added to the roster in the final voting that's a possibility too but if i'm not mistaken there usually is some kind of requirement but at the same time the managers of the teams also have a hand in that also so it's not just as much as if he gets voted in or gets picked, the managers usually play a role in that. Yeah, I'm honestly not sure about that either. Unfortunately, I would assume it's almost like plate appearances whenever it comes to people being considered as everyday starters in a lineup. You have to have 3.1 uh, plate appearances per game and even, right. even to be considered an everyday right. starter. So, And that's just to be on the ballot. Lineup, I don't know. Yeah, and, like yeah, I don't know. So um, whenever it comes to pitching, though, I'm not exactly sure how they go about that. However, you know, if he's going six plus innings from here on out and it does go by innings, then maybe there's a possibility that he catches up by the All-Star break. It, it, it may not matter. I mean, even if he has yeah. a truncated number of innings compared to other pitchers, if you keep seeing the evidence that we're seeing on a night-to-night -night basis, mm -hmm. I don't think many people will argue. Rick and McKeesport. Everybody's going to watch him. What's that? I said everybody's going to want to watch him, so exactly. it doesn't matter who you are. That's another thing, and, and let's let's put that part out there. All-star games are about who people want to see now. It's not always mm -hmm. about sometimes the best player. Sometimes it's about people and who they want to see. So that's a really good point, too. Rick and McKeesport, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, uh, good evening, you two. Um, I tweeted today that uh, if the Pirates had uh, four different Paul Skeens, we'd have a pretty good pitching staff. <laughs> And Pirates have four different Paul Skeens. They've been doing a lot of things differently, that's for sure. And <laughs> yeah. if they find four different Paul Skeens, someone needs to be executive of the year. But it, 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 it goes to show you. And let's remove the whole hypothetical thing and take that off the table. Let's just settle with what they've got right now. Jared Jones, Paul Skeens, and then you still got a guy like Mitch Keller who ain't too bad, Susie. But you get back-to-back -back mm -hmm. starts with Jones and Skeens, and you see the results. They went back-to-back -back games in Chicago. They could take three out of four in this series at Wrigley Field, and those two guys got you the first two. Yeah, and even whenever you look at Jared Jones just last night, what a lot of people don't realize is he still had seven strikeouts on the board, mm -hmm. and his best pitch, his fastball, wasn't even working. He was using his slider more than anything to get his seven strikeouts. That's what helped.
helped him induce those seven strikeouts. He was using his fastball, which he never believed he would have to say this, as his setup pitch for that slider to get those strikeouts. So even on an off night, a guy like Jared Jones, who you're not thinking of because you have the Paul Skeens flashes right now, on a bad night, he's still able to produce wins for the Pirates. And then you have Paul Skeens the night after that, just blowing fastballs at 100 plus miles per hour past the team, producing 67 strikes on 100 pitches. That's not bad to have in your rotation. And whenever you look at the series ahead, I mean, if you could get them, you know, every couple of days, you're going to get a lot of series wins here coming up. At that, and that's really the key. If you want to make the postseason, Susie, you know this as well as anybody. You've been around baseball long enough. You want to make the postseason, the best way to do it, don't lose series. Either win a three-game series, take at least two, or split a four-game, or split a two-game. That's the best way yeah. to stack wins is don't lose series. And that's the best way we've seen it happen, at least mathematically speaking over the years. Jim and Peters Township, you're on the nightly sports call. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been following Pirates since 1960. I've never seen two young pitchers on his staff as good as these two guys. And I'll tell you the reason why um, Skeens looks good. He reminds me of Justin Verlander, how he can work the plate up and down and around about. Even Dan Plezak was saying on MLB, he was, was brilliant. He works the plate on all sides. That is a great point. And Jim, thank you for the call. And, and Susie, last Saturday, I was sitting in the press box at PNC Park. I was sitting next to our producer, Steve Banco, who's producing the show. And Steve asked me the question, who does he remind you of? How, who does he look like and what he's doing? And he and I both came up with one of the same names. We both said Justin Verlander, not only because mm -hmm. of the triple digits, but the, the mixing of the pitch speeds, the location. We talked about all the same things we just heard there and probably a couple other things too. But it's funny he mentions Justin Verlander because that's the same thing I've seen. Yeah, and I, I think whenever you even just look at what Yasmani Grandal said after today's game with Skeen's movement, I, I, there was a pitch sequence that somebody put together of all of Skeen's strikeouts today on Twitter, and it was ridiculous watching Grandal catch all these strikeouts because it went from a movement pitch to just a fastball that's blowing past these guys, and it's even tricking Grandal, and he's caught him in AAA and now at the major league level. And after the game, Grandal said, this isn't even his best. You know, mm. I expect him to go 102 miles per hour next time he's out there. But this is exciting to see after his debut. So if everybody's getting excited about how fast he's pitching, the movement that we're seeing him place across the plate to get the whiffs that he's seeing 22 on today, then that's pretty good. It's crazy because last Saturday we saw that slider biting with all that movement. And that was clearly yep. the pitch that was working for him probably more frequently. Then we see today, mm -hmm. he talked about having the fastball come in today. That's kind of crazy to imagine if both things are happening at the same time. That is where mm -hmm. things get really, really scary as far as his potential. We got to take another break. We'll wrap up when we come back. Stick around.